What's up, YouTube? Capo here, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Divisions podcast, sort of thing, the breakdown of the draft. And I'm joined today with me, him. It's me. It's Z A C. If you are not a '90s wrestling fan, you wouldn't kind of get that because I messed it up anyway. But that is a DDP WCW reference. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. That was an awkward DDP reference. But anyway, <laughs> we are here this episode with the Unova White Division. Division. There we go. Where <laughs> we are going over the three teams' drafts. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to be going over the Jewish Giraffe, Ethereum Knight, and D Knight's Fam. So the Jewish, no, not the Jewish Giraffe, the San Francisco Draft Breaks, the California Crotons, and the Magic Carp. Of uh, Markarth. The Magic, the magic Carp. You breaks. made that sound so much more badass. You're like the Magic Carps of Markarth. <laughs> It's like, oh. oh, my God. Oh. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. There's so, gonna be, all right. We are going to start with the Crawdons, I believe. And just a quick glance over it. I like the draft. I don't love it yet. I want to, once we delve into it, I might like it more, but I like it. That always seems to happen. Uh, their mega pick was the Mega Manetric, and they paired it up with the Tyran Shark for the very first pick of their draft. I was confused by this. I like T-Tar. I like the T-Tar pick on its own. I, I get, I, maybe they just wanted a good physical attacker to go with a good special attacker. But, like, I don't know a lot about T-Tar. I know it gets, like, sand. I just don't know on a team. On, on uh, like, you can go ahead. My brain's not working. Um... I'm not particularly fond of this pick just because it doesn't really make much sense to pair it up with a Manetric. Yeah. Um, Manetric cannot take physical attacks for At anything. All. Unless if you intimidate. That's mm -hmm. about it. But Tyranitar is four times weak to fighting. Doesn't make much sense. But Tyranitar is a really great mod in terms of offensive presence and defensive presence. Yeah, so I, I think it's more one of those picks like I've mentioned before. I like it on its own. I don't like the synergy. Um, yeah. I like T-Tar. I like what it does. I like its base stats. It's a pseudo-legend, so obviously it's going to have good base stats. Um, that's typing only presents it presents some more weaknesses than you'd like out of your first round pick, but it's not awful. And um, it's kind of it's kind of funny because we saw someone pick Mega T-Tar and draft Garchomp first. Uh, they it, and they uh, it wasn't taken in the A League, but then we saw someone draft Mega Garchomp, but then T-Tar was someone's first pick, so. Little, not not as clear and cut as I thought it would be when I thought of it, but it's still kind of interesting. Um, T-Tar is good, and <laughs> it can get stealth rocks and can deal with a lot of the flying types and the psychic types. So it's versatile, but I don't like it paired with Manectric out the gate. We'll see. How, we'll have to see how it develops with other mons. His second pick. This is painful to say because it's my homeboy, the Star Raptor. And I love this pick. That's it. That's all I have to say about Star again, Raptor. I love it. Again, I, I don't know a lot about Star Raptor because, like I said, I only picked up competitive battle in 6th gen. I know it's good. I know it's the second choice. Not even the second choice. It's like 1A, 1B with Talonflame as far as Brave Birding goes. I don't like the synergy still. I don't, I don't, I don't like the synergy because <laughs> none of these mons want to eat a fighting attack. <laughs> yeah. But the thing about uh, I love about Star Raptor is that right now Ethereum Knight really is packing in a lot of power in terms yeah. of Tyranitar and Star oh, Raptor. Oh, definitely. And he said he said I didn't have enough power this uh, this last season, and he's definitely answering that. So I can see that's a plus. But then yeah. and there's my phone. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, but it's definitely uh, definitely answered that, and the power is there. It's just a matter of yeah. if he can pull it together as far as synergy wise later in the draft. Star Raptor brings Reckless with a choice ban. If nothing outspeeds the Star Raptor, this thing is going to take lives. Yeah, it it will one shot defensive mons. It, it's a wall breaker. Close combat, Brave Bird, Double Edge, those are everything that can take you down. Plus, it gets the U turn. It has Intimidate, so that's double Intimidate Pokemon right over there for you. Yeah. Um, maybe that might answer the Tyranitar's and fighting weakness that he a has bit. a bit. Maybe. It's still something that he has to really look at, and maybe his as we go down the that's, draft. That's just a lot of work to get that synergy between just the three to work. Like yeah, but um, I I like his next two picks. Uh, his next pick is the superior. I loved superior. Mm -hmm. Superior can easily sweep a team in one to two turns. Superior is one of those mods. If you switch out 
you're going to pay for it the next three turns. Yeah. Just because you got to have a mon that outspeeds it. you got to have a mon that can hit it hard. Yes. And you got to always prepare for Superior just because... I, I, and I think its biggest threat isn't even the A-League. I think Volcarona is Superior's biggest threat. And yeah. it's not yeah, even true. in A-League. Uh, the only thing that Superior is scared of is, like I said, Clefable, Milk Tank, and Gudra. Mm. Well, because they're all sap zippers. Yeah, and any other, like, um, unaware. How many unaware Pokemon are there? Uh, that's Quacksire. Quacksire, there we go. But that doesn't matter because it's going to get dropped by four times Leaf Storm. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's see. So I, I, I like this pick. I mean, it, it can get walled by a few things completely, but... Um, once again, after one leaf storm, it's at average stats aren't so average anymore. And if it packs like uh, uh, HP poison, even it's gonna hurt, like on the switch, Inical Fable is gonna not appreciate two HP poisons. I know it uh, it doesn't acknowledge the stat boost, but still on a switch in from any mon max special attack, HP poison is gonna hurt. It won't it won't two. I, I think it'd be a three hit KO at most. Um, but it still would get some nice damage in. But I like the next pick because it starts to bring the first four together. Uh, his next pick is the Moongus. Um, Moongus puts in puts in work with the Regenerator. In there. I, I just like it because it's a fighting resist. He needed something that resisted fighting for the T-Tar and make everything else kind of start to come together a little bit. Not everything's together still, but he gets a poison. Re- I don't know if it's a poison resist, but it's neutral poison for Superior. It gets um, it gets the uh, fighting resist for Titar, and Titar gives the psychic resist for him. So they work well together. Um, so and fire attacks towards him are going. Titar's going to eat him up. So they they work they work pretty well together. Um, uh, Amoongus doesn't do a whole lot. It's annoying. Spore, uh, Giga Drain. So it's good. It's a wall, um, and it complements Titar. So I like the pick for Team Synergy wise. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with the Moongus, just because it's it's really annoying to deal with, plus it's got decent abilities, plus a regenerator. Um, but in terms of what it can really do, it's not much. Maybe you can slap in the random hidden power and surprise that person, but at that point it becomes alright. You know his other three moves off by the heart. And the real thing that bothered me about like Superior and Moongus back-to-back is that they're both weak to flying. Yeah. And but T- Titar but handles that. Uh, but Titar doesn't really get any, like, you don't want Titar to keep on racking up damage. Oh yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, in situational circumstances, and he answers stuff later. I'm, just, but I get what you're saying for these yeah. first five. That's a problem because you can't just keep saying Titar this, Titar that, because yeah, he can do it, but you don't want him switching in on all like all these and also real quick um amoongus answers the fairy weakness to t-tar so they work that's i didn't even think about that but that's an amazing just t-tar and amoongus yeah that's an amazing pairing they answer like three weaknesses for each other um but uh, to keep along with why i'm saying that there's a common fly weakness his next pick is a sock and i hate this pick this is the first pick i truly hate because i don't <laughs> understand it it's only uh, it's only redeeming quality, and I might be missing something. I don't know anything about Sock. I didn't know anything about Throw till I looked it up. I looked up Sock. It's all 70s and 80s until his attack is 126. He's slow. I get he gets sturdy, but are you just going to sturdy, like, retaliate or something? I don't know what the move is, like, the whole time. Sturdy counter. Like, I don't under- Explain to me before I lock in that I hate this pick why this is not a bad pick. I'm looking at it right now, and it's, it's pretty hard to see. This is maybe one of my not favorite picks the only redeeming quality that i see is that it's got workable speed but at that point it becomes really obvious that you're gonna run uh jolly or yeah jolly i mean sock if if you if you have sock why not like i get points but you had 20 points left over and sock is are you or is it and you uh it's and you oh if it's and you okay if it was are you i was gonna be a little upset i was gonna be i was gonna hate the pick even more because he could have got hair across who, yeah. yeah, it has a four times weakness. Which I think Heracross is BL. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, well, no, it's Mega's BL, I think. No. No, they're both BL. BL. They're both BL. Sorry. Never um, mind. Scratch that. But he does get the Mole Breaker, which nullifies all Rotoms a bit. A bit. Yeah. Uh, Sturdy's really nice just because he can. you know for sure he can take one hit. But And maybe that one hit might change the game or the match's outcome. But, like... 
looking at it's this. just it's it's hard it's hard to love it's gonna be really hard it's, to use it's easily my least favorite pick of the ones we've gone over it honestly looks like someone took the last pick of his draft and just like it was a graphic mistake and put it in the middle like if you looked how the draft went it but, honest, honestly that's 100 percent what it looks like because the rest of his draft is awesome i love the rest of his draft i just don't like where it was where it went and why it's on this team it doesn't make sense to me on why sock is in with Tyranitar, Star Raptor. Yeah, that's like, just if it was Throw, I would like it more. Obviously, because th- I think I don't understand what Sock does. Someone, and I'm not trying to at- attack anybody here. I'm just confused. I don't understand. Crawdon, if you hear this, please explain. To, if you want to, if you want to like keep your strategy secret and then win the league with the league leader or MVP, uh, Sock, do it. Don't tell me, but I, I want to know why. Because um, I feel like. Like, Hariyama it's, it's, would have been a hard. better and you fighting. It's Har- hard to explain. I feel like Hariyama, who didn't get drafted, would have been way better than this. I, I agree with you on that. It's just, it didn't, it doesn't make much sense to me where it was picked. Maybe he just needed something. Cause maybe, Har- this is, maybe this is his mon that he'll redraft. I, sure I hope is. so. I hope so. I really hope he, because if he gets, even if he just gets Hariyama, that is a significant improvement and makes his team a lot more deadly. Because yeah. he, cause he has the 20 points left over to get Hariyama. Unless Hariyama was bumped into UU. I didn't examine that list fully. If Hariyama was UU, but I'm pretty sure it's NU by normal, so the most it could go up is RU. So he had the points for Hariyama. And I hope if Hariyama's still available, he redrafts it. Uh, yeah, that's if Hariyama makes it past I, I don't the, think it will. Like... But if it does, I hope he redrafts Hariyama. For so- unless he has something planned. Because if he has something playing, all, all power to him. But I don't see it. It's my least favorite pick so far. Uh, his next pick is the Jirachi. And th- this is why I said it seems like he took the, someone took the sock and put it in the middle of the draft from the end. Because Jirachi is <laughs> an awesome pick here. An amazing pick. It's one of my... It is Actually, I'm going to go out and say it is my best value pick at this spot. Where um, it's drafted, it's the best quality slash value Pokemon. I personally think. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't love this pick. I, I really? love the Mon. I just don't love the team it's on. Yeah, Tyranitar can take the the flamethrowers or heat waves or fire punches or whatever it wants to throw. But Tyranitar is gonna be taking fire punches. It's gonna be taking the fire attacks, flying, flying attacks. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be taking random damage that it shouldn't have to take because there's yeah, not true. a lot of answers. True. I, I see that. I kind of see it coming together now. So. Another, it's another instance of great Pokemon, amazing pick, and this might have been just a pick of best Pokemon, best Pokemon available. I and mean, he might have not thought too much about Team Synergy, which isn't great. But at that point, I, this Jirachi in the what, ten, nine, eight, seven, six round is crazy. Um, I like it a lot. Um, definitely, 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 definitely enjoy it. Um, as well as the next couple picks, uh, but I do see the. Weakness to fire and flying starting to become a big deal, and and like that's the mons alone are really great, and I'm not trying to like just poke at like I'm pretty sure if you just look at it, the team for maybe ten or so minutes, then you're like, all right, there's a common weakness. Yeah. But I think last season there was a common weakness to some 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 team had a really common weakness, and they played around it so good. Mm-hmm. So maybe this might be one of the circumstances where Theory Knight recognizes his weakness but I, I think he, he has patches it. I think he has an answer to the fire part of it I don't know about the flying but Titar can take the physical fire hits and his pick after the one we're about to talk about can take the special uh, which one are we at? we're on Ambipalm right? yes uh, Ambipalm is again purple mon one of my favorites though I love Ambipalm it can do more things than you expect um, stab technician fake out is not something you want to take but you have to you don't have an option you must take the fake out um uh return from it is not fun to take uh it gets gunshot <laughs> it gets elemental punches it, uh, it gets covet uh knock off it i just amy palm does a lot but again not a huge fan of it on this team because this team's already really really physical yeah um like once again just for me it's just common weaknesses maybe he needs to look at his team and address it but Ami Palm is a threat it does what it does and it does it well uh, it's, fake out yeah it's an offensive threat this thing's not taking a hit though and that's that's his issue he has plenty of offense before this pick he only has I would say three 
good defensive mons. Jirachi, uh, Titar, and Amoongus. But at that point... They all have pretty common weaknesses in, in, the, in the league. You're fighting, uh, Dark, and Fire, and Psychic. But, I mean, they, they counterbalance each other's weaknesses pretty well, but you need more than three months to counter each other's weaknesses. Yeah, and I feel like the next pick really justifies, like, what he's trying to do. Um, that is the Tentacruel. And Tentacruel is a really awesome pick for where it's at, just because it's a rapid spinner. It's pretty toxic defensive. Spikes. Uh, it's toxic spikes. Its defense is not good. I, special it's, defense? Its special defense is amazing. It's like 120 or 130. Let me look yeah. it up real quick. It's the, the reason I said it half just. Uh, I was going to say it half justifies it is because flying types ravage this team. Ravage. Not even. Not even. Oh, kind of hurt. They just like. There's nothing to answer the flying type weakness besides Titar. And, and e- even then, most flying Pokemon. A decent amount do get close combat. Yeah, um, let's see. Uh, it has 65 base defense, tentacruel, so that's not good. Um, it's not weak to flying, but it it, it doesn't stop it. Um, so let's see. The only I think I think Jirachi resists flying. Actually, I think Steel resists flying. I think it does. So he does have Jirachi too, but that's not enough. The the amount of weaknesses outweighs two resistances. There's yeah one. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four weaknesses to key Pokemon to flying that he only has two resistances for. And so it's not as bad as I thought it was. I thought it was going to be uncontrollable, but he, I think he needs to redraft uh, Sock and maybe not even take Ariyama, take in another flying resist or an answer. Like a, I don't know if there is a, bulking, a bulky electric type a that bulk. could help. Uh, I don't know if there's a bulky electric type that could help. That would be awesome. But if he wants to just take Hariyama, Hariyama could help out more than Sock could. Um, I don't know. I Personally, I think he might have to redraft a Sock for something that doesn't make sense. Then he's going to have to trade that Mon and potentially get something that helps his team. I mean, but if he does that, he's going to have to give up Superior. Like, that's his... I think Superior is his best trade chip. True. Because, like, the others are... The others have things that do what they do, except for maybe T-Tar, but he's not going to trade T-Tar. But Superior, there's only, like, one other contrary user... And he's not, he didn't get drafted. So, I think Superior's his best trade chip. But, I mean, even if he just gets Hariyama, that doesn't help the problem, but it definitely, uh, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't affect the problem, but it definitely helps his team. Yeah. Um, his next pick is the Lipard. Prankster user over here, but at the same time, we're going to see the common theme on his team. I'm, I'm really sorry, Ethereum. I like it for really just... <laughs> Well, I mean, it's it's a third fighting weakness, and he only has one Mon that resists it. Because Star Raptor's neutral, Jirachi's neutral. So, oh no, he has two Mons that resist. He has Tentacruel, or no, he has three. Okay, so it's not nearly as bad, because he's got Gorgeist who's immune, Tentacruel who resists, and Amoongus who resists. But you're using Amoongus to counter Titar already, so I feel like... But it has Regenerator, so it kind of cancels each other out. So it's not as bad, but there is a lot of common weaknesses between Fire, Flying, and Fighting. Three Fight. Fs. The three yeah. Fs. Um, I like Lipard. I like the pick. I like it kind of with the team. I would. It would probably be better. Like again, I think the key piece that's missing is taken up by Sock. Like <laughs> that Sock. I, I like literally think if he drafted one different Mon than Sock, he'd be good. Like honestly, if he drafted like Golem, <laughs> it would have helped his team more than Sock. Like I know that sounds like stupid. It's a Rock type. He needed another counter to a flying type or a fire to- like the fire flying situation so if he had gotten like Armald no not they're neutral so like if he gotten like Amistar or uh like Kabutops that would have helped more than Kabutops is basically the same type of mon as Sock just a different typing it's it's hard hitting I think again I think I'm not an expert in this it's like I said Gen yeah, 6 it's pretty hard hitting yeah, it's hard hitting, but can't do much else, and it relies on rain to be very effective. It relies on rain to be fast. Sock doesn't can't. There's nothing that increases sock speed besides baton passing something onto it, and tailwind. Yeah, um, I I don't I. Lifeheart's a good mod. Yes, don't it get is. me wrong. I, I, I like Lifeheart. It's just dark, it is its problem. It's a dark type. Yeah, <laughs> if you can change Lifeheart's ability, then or uh, it's uh, typing. Typing. 
that and you don't even have to change his typing. He just he's missing. I don't I don't know what Mon it is. I really don't. I can't. It's just I feel like that sock is the key piece that's taking up something that's not like he's just a placeholder. And like he was like I'll redraft something or something. Like, I know he didn't. And I guarantee you there's a reason he has sock and we're just crapping on it. And <laughs> he's gonna make yeah. us look stupid. He's gonna get he's gonna like a like, 6-0 week one with sock. <laughs> and we're just gonna be like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, we gotta look at our situation. But, yeah. But like I said, I think I think he might have to redraft Sock for something. If he has that extra points, he might have to redraft it for something better. Yeah. And he might have to make a multiple trade. Yeah. And it might be like the cost of a Moon gets appear or Star Raptor, even Jirachi or Abby Palm. Yeah. Um, um, but onto his next pick, I like it, but again, it adds to the flying fire weakness. But I do like the Gore guys, especially I like it on the team as well because it's so bulky, so bulky. Gives him a spin blocker, gives him an immunity. Um, it gives him a dark weakness, but he he only had one other mon weak to dark, so it's not a huge deal. Um, so I like Gore guys. I like it here. I like the Gore guys. I think it's a good mon. Um, once again, it's just whenever I see a pattern, I, I yeah, you lock I, in on it. And for me, it's, it becomes a bit obvious at some point. So the Gorgeist is a good mon individually on like, the team. It adds a bit of extra viability. Yeah, like if you uh, just if I played him, all I have to do is bring Infernape. That's all I have to do. And his team's in trouble. Like, I, no, I don't have to do anything special. So like Embor. Embor could have a field day with this because it gets Head Smash. And it gets Flame Charge. And it gets like Close Combat. So, like, Mons like that can ravage this team. But, again, I don't think this is the worst team. I still like this team more than I like the Pyroars, I think it was. Um, uh, maybe. I, 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 think, I, I think this team has the worst pick of anyone we've gone over, but I like this team overall more than the Pyroars by a little bit. By a little bit. I'm, I'm going to see how they – I'm going to watch their first couple matches closely and see how they play yeah. and address those weaknesses and cover it up just because I'm curious on how – they're going to address that. Yeah, I feel and like whether he, it's going to become a huge thing. I feel like league. I'm missing something with Salt here. I feel like he knows something that I don't or you don't. Um, it, yeah, I like the like it gets sturdy, which is nice. Maybe does it get Stealth Rock or Rapid Spin? Uh, it doesn't get Rapid Spin. Okay, well then I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. Uh, um, it gets attract. There you go. That's it. We figured it out. Gets knockoff. Um, I don't know, but I, I think. I honestly think this team would be a hundred million times better if he like if he got rid of Sock and drafted like even just Hariyama. Hariyama gives you bulk. It gives you it gets thick fat. It gets uh, like it's slow, but it gets good defenses or decent defenses. Not great, uh, but it has such a high HP stat. It doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. It counters it. So I think Harry even Hariyama would be it would have been better. And even if it, if it's you you then I, my argument's completely out the window. That's fine. But if it's uh, are you then you, you have 20 points all left over you he cost you 40 that's 60 math is your friend not saying he didn't do the math that made him sound like I was calling him dumb I'm not calling him dumb at all he I think he has a plan I think we don't see it and he has a plan um, yeah he's well he was, he's a fantastic battler yeah I mean, he made the playoffs didn't he uh no oh he oh no he was the one with you that just missed out by like a game all right, yeah. uh, but I mean, he he made the playoffs for a reason, or almost made the playoffs for a reason. So I think he has an idea. I just think he went too much in the other direction. He said he didn't have enough offense last year, and again, I might <laughs> yeah, be mis- I might be misquoting, but I'm pretty sure it was him that said that. And he just went full flip, like he has two walls on this team, or no, he has three walls and the one that can be a wall but isn't always a wall in Jirachi. But he has Tentacruel, uh, Amoongus, and Core Guys. So. Like he's got he he went the other way. <laughs> he yeah, went, he come, went come power hyper one, offense. A one eighty, a one three sixty. If we ever saw one, yeah, um, and, and it's not bad. Hyper offense obviously works. It's worked plenty of times before. Uh, if you watch the GBA, Shady's working the hyper offense really well. Um, the only th- the only time he's not doing hyper offense is when he brings out the melodic, and <laughs> and needs to run a mirror coat. So. <laughs> And we uh, know how that worked out. Yeah, so I, like, I feel like this is... I still like this team a smidge better, but I think it's more because I love the individual mons. I like Tentacruel. I love Ambiquam. I like Star Raptor. I love Superior. I like Titar. I like Amoongus. I like Jirachi. I like Core Guys. So um, I, I, I like this a little more than the Pyroars, but not by much. I, I'm going to make a bold prediction. I think this is the first team that's going to make some trades. Yeah. 
but I think it's going to cost them a lot to, I, I to find that bold, one Mon. I want to make a oh. bold pre prediction and saying the only, and I'm saying bold, like bold is, the word bold is bolded. That's how bold. Um, pretty bold. Um, I think he only does a redraft for Sock. That is the only thing I think he will do, and I think he'll still match what he did last season at least. I, I'm going to predict that he's going to redraft Sock and make a trade, and I think it's going to cost him I think some, it's, some it's mods, got, but it's going to help him. It's it, going to help him a lot. It's got to cost him Ambi Palm, Jirachi, Sir, or Superior. I, I think uh, those are his three most valuable trade chips that he would part with. And yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I don't I'm think interested. he would. All right, so... That, that was that team. That was one team. <laughs> um, next, we have the Magic Harps of Markarth. The Magic Coats of Magic. And uh, I love I love this team. I, uh, I'm in love with this team. Carps. Like, uh, yeah. Baby. I, this this is one Bieber of my favorite love. teams that I've seen. Yeah. I only have one or two questionable picks on this team. And it's mm. not... One of them, I'm like, what? There's no reason. The other, like, it's not bad. It's just there's no reason. And one, I'm like, eh. But he drafted Mega Gardevoir and then proceeded to get Dragonite. And Dragonite's a good... It's good multi-scale, so it takes two Ice Shards to kill it. Yes, <laughs> it, it does. It does. Um, it get, It's a great... It gets a lot of... It gets a lot of moves. It gets Iron Tail for uh, Fairies if you've got a D-Dance up. Um, it's got Outrage, Dragon Claw, D-Dance, like I said. Um, I think it gets Screens, doesn't it? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I think it gets at least one screen, <laughs> whether it's reflect or light. Though, right? If it's reflect or light screen, but I think it gets one of those. Um, but it's just it's a all out attacker. Like you're not gonna be defensive with or supportive with Dragonite. But he doesn't need to be when they with his second pick. Um, he also has and like it's drafts like these that confuse me because he has 60 points left over, which is ridiculous when you look at his draft and how much I like it. Oh uh, yeah, I, I don't understand. Like the Dragonite's such an awesome pick because not only does it have such a wide range of attacks, it's got extreme speed and Dragon Dance. Yeah, it gets priority and gets set up. And I forgot to mention the elemental punches it gets. Um, so it's, yeah, it's an awesome on. The and it complements it so well with Gardevoir. The second pick makes him makes me hate the coach. Uh, he took the guy I won in the second round. The first pick of the second round that was Reggie Steel, which I think is close. Oh. To before, oh. I apologize to Dragonite Spam because I was supposed to battle him and I'm doing this podcast instead. So I apologize. <laughs> I will do nothing but love your team because I feel really bad. Yeah, Reggie Steel, I think, is the best Steel, uh, is the best Mon in a fantasy core. Not just Steel type, it's the best Fairy, Dragon, or Steel because it can be defensive both ways. It, it's just a Steel type. Ow, I dropped something on my toe. Um, it's the best Steel. It's steel is a good typing because it's weak to fire, ground, and fighting. And literally, if you're physical, physically defensive, like Max physically defensive, you cancel out two of those pretty much because um, of how bulky Registeel is. And Ice doesn't do crap to Registeel either. So Dragonite's sitting there like, oh, hit me with one Ice Shard and I'll hit you with a Iron Tail or something. And it's like, okay, his multi scale's gone. I'll just Ice Shard again. Just kidding. Switch to Registeel. And you're, you're, you're sitting there and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I rage quit. Bye. <laughs> so. I, I, like, there's nothing you can do to... I, I think this is the best fantasy core, personally. Because um, Dragon Knight's not just straight, not bulky. It's decently bulky. And Gardevoir especially bulky. So the three of them together just hurt a lot. I, I'm afraid of this team. Like, the Reggie Steel puts in so much work, and it's bulky all around. Like, it can take physical hits. It can take special hits. And It, it gets, just depends on what, it, what he wants to run. Yeah, it gets T-Wave and Stealth Rock, too, is a huge thing. Yeah, and it, it pairs up so well with his next pick, too, which is the Gabantula. I don't... Um, this is my first pick of, like, I don't kind of like it, but I do. I like I Galvantula. Love, I love this pick. See, I, I, lo love, this I pick. love Galvantula. I love it on this team. I don't like where he took it. I think he could have waited around. But, saying that, it is awesome on this team. A speed control, a Volt Switch, gives you a, a strong... Uh, it gives you 100% accuracy Thunder, uh, gives you a Bug Presence... Which I don't think a lot of people have in this, like a strong yeah. bug, bug presence. I, don't, I think it, there's Mega Scizor, this, and I don't, I can't think of it off the top of my head. So, uh, B drill, Mega B drill. So, yeah. So I think I think it, it gives them a nice presence. Um, why why do you love it? Uh, just because it gets Sticky Web. He has Sticky Web, and I love it because I, I love it, but I hate him. 
I knew I was gonna because this this was the thing I was gonna draft instead of Meloetta. Really? Ah. Oh. Because it's speed control and it's so great. That's like, why. That's why I drafted Gardevoir's Thunderous. Not the, Gardevoir is not the fastest mon around, but yeah. Gilvanishal helps Gardevoir to really set up on it. Yes. And not only are you gonna have to, you have to bring a rapid spinner on this team. Yeah. You Gavantula is hard a hard hitting mon. Yeah, definitely. Um, Plus it's fast. The, I mean, I drafted Thunderous for speed control, Prankster T Wave, um, uh, but Galvantula doesn't even need to be on the field to give you speed control. It can just you can pack a uh, Volt Switch, a Bug Move. You don't even have to pack a Bug Move, but a Bug Move, and uh, either Thunder or Energy Ball, and just throw up sticky webs, vault switch the hell out of there and let everyone else do the work while you just sit in the back and just snicker. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, w- I definitely like this pick. I would have, I probably would have waited around, but now that you said you would have taken it, it wouldn't have mattered. He wouldn't have gotten it. Um, so now I like it period. I love it. And yeah. And then his next pick is the S beyond. And once again, nothing but love for this team. I, I like the pick again, maybe a will maybe a little early or maybe something else could have done its job a little better but I can't really hate on it because it synchronizes it magic bounces uh, psychic stab screens wish baton pass all that beautiful stuff I like stuff. it the most because stealth rocks will get rid of dragonites what's it called? magic bounce uh, no the other the oh. dragonites I don't know what you're saying The it's ability oh multi-scale multi-scale there we go um Espeon prevents that from happening because yeah. no matter what, if you're going to bring an Espeon, you're going to be a bit hesitant clicking anything. Yeah, like you're going to be you're, toxic, any of that. Unless if you have a mole breaker, then maybe you might be carefree. But still, it's going to be scary, and you're going to need to like, you're going to have to prepare for this Espeon, Dragonite, and Gavantula. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, it works well because he doesn't have a dark weakness before it too. It. Gardevoir is fairy, so it's neutral. Um, so, so it, it, just synergy, just definitely synergy. Should we go on to his next pick? Yeah, and this is the one I'm really like, why? Why did you need <laughs> this? Um, it's it, it's not a problem. It's not a bad pick. It, there's just no reason for it. He doubled down on physical dragon attackers. The way that his draft was going, he had to get something that was questionable, and the way that Haxers is, that's not a bad question to have. I just like as as opposed to, let's put this in comparison. He drafted a Haxorus in the same, I believe this was round five. Uh, three, yeah, five six. And the same draft round, Sock was picked up. Yeah, so, so it, it's it's a better if, problem to have. Yeah, I, I I could definitely see him redrafting this though, just because it's a it's a physical dragon. I don't like it's it's got a huge physical power and his fast. It, Dragonite. It, there's no reason when you have Dragonite. Like if he drafted a like if he drafted the Hydreigon first and then drafted. I think he wanted Hydreigon with this pick. I think because I remember him saying like c- commenting on the guy who took Hydreigon and said, "Wow, that sucks." Blah blah blah. I think he wanted Hydreigon with this pick and wanted a special dragon, which would have made a lot more sense. Still, don't like doubling dra- down on dragon types when you have Reggie Steel. Whatever, it works. Um, because Registeel is one of the few, and when he's got Nidoqueen too, and Kaboleon. Oh my god, my brain's just, it's like everything resists fairy. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, I like the Haxorus just because I think he's not going to run the typical Dragonite. True. This is going to be one of the toughest teams that any team is going to go week in and week out, just because the Mons that are present are, like, they complement each other so well. If, if he reigns special Dragonite, Dragonite's very bulky. 95 defense 100 special defense 91 hp so he could run like a, a defensive or special defensive dragonite with d dance um or or he could just run a special dragonite and dragonite's got more weaknesses i could perfectly see him drafting haxorus if he drafted like hydragon or something but i just don't i don't see the point in drafting both of them like it's not a bad pick it's never a bad pick when you draft them on with 147 base attack because that's stupid good Especially when it's got like 91 speed too, so you can choice scarf and everyone's crying as it beats him to death. But I just don't see the point of drafting both of them. I, I like it. I like it. Like I said, nothing but love for this see, that's, team. See, that's my negative pick. Uh, that's the only negative. Like, it, I, and it's not. It's not me saying, "Oh, this pick is so good," but it's the worst of good. It's not. <laughs> to me, it's not good. It's not bad. It's not good. 
because it's two physical attacking dragons. When Dragonite, I think, does the job a little bit better because it has literally it's 147 base attack to 136 base attack. Dragonite has less base attack, but its defenses, its speed, and everything are better. Uh, we'll move on to the second pick, which is the Swellow. And Swellow is a really good mod for its value. Yes, yeah, for NU, yeah. Yeah, so it's easily viable in OU because you let it get its burn orb up or toxic orb. Once again, you're going to be careful when you set up a Will O Wisp or something, and yeah. that could potentially lead him to not put a toxic orb or something else. It could be Choice Bandit for all we could know. Yeah, in a situation where you have to draft an NU Mon Swell is definitely not a bad thing to have with Guts and 125 base speed. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely going to hurt, especially with, uh, what's the move called? Facade. Uh, yes, Facade. So that's that's definitely not good, because Facade gets a double boost, I believe, from uh, the Guts and being burned anyway. So it is 100%, 100% a deadly Mon to deal with. You basically want to hit it with as many ice ty uh, ice attacks as you can. That way, it does if it is stashed, it's frozen. <laughs> like that's the only thing I see is going to be a problem. It's not even that big of a problem. He's going to have four ice weaknesses, two four times ice weaknesses, but it's not a huge issue because he has answers to them. Yeah, I'd, like I said, his team's really well built, and he definitely put in a decent amount of thought into it. Yeah, uh, especially like drafting a swallow this early means that he has his and you pick. That yeah, he wants and yeah, it's it out of the way. It's it's something that you have to worry about because it gets quick attack too. It gets U turn. Uh, you could run Scrappy, uh, Swallow. Yeah, with with a uh, special attacking Swallow with Scrappy. Mm-hmm. Because it does get Boom Burst, Heat Wave, Air Slash. It gets some decent uh, special attacks. Of, for sure. Uh, it's it's not a bad pick at all. Haxorus no. is a worse pick than Swallow here. <laughs> That's weird. Uh. Then his very next pick is the Nido Queen. I wanted, and, uh, like I said, I wanted Nido. I almost went with a Nido at a couple points, didn't, because I got, ended up getting Crobat earlier. And I love, I love the Nido Queen pick. It gives him some bulk, which he kind of needs, because all he really has bulk-wise is Dragonite, which you don't usually run bulky and Registeel. Steel. So Nido Queen gives him some bulk, and you'll see a common trend coming up. And it, uh, it hits pretty hard and addresses um, a fairy weakness that he didn't even need to address anyway. He already had an answer, and then he takes an answer later. Uh, he just keeps on answering. Um, I, I, I like the Nido Queen. It's a bit bulkier than Nido King. Yeah. That's and that's. I think I think it would. He he wanted Nido King, but it had been taken. But he also put Nido Queen, and I think Nido Queen's better for him because it's bulkier, and he needed some more Mons that were bulky because Espeon Galvantula they have defenses, but they're kind of still Galvantula doesn't have defenses. Espeon has defenses, and same with Carvor, but they're all three kind of frail in one aspect or another. And Swell is definitely frail, and Hankstress is kind of not super frail, but it's frail as well. So he needed. Uh, some more bulk besides Dragonite and Reggie Steel, uh, Reggie Steel, and he gets it in his next three picks, and Nido Queen's an awesome pickup. Yeah, I, I definitely like it, and speaking of bulk, what's more bulkier than a Shuckle? I hate this man for picking this, but it's not a bad pick. Um, what is it? Are you? I don't, it doesn't deserve to be. I don't, I don't know. It, it should be Ubers, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on a second. I got an important text message. Okay, it's a smiley face. It's not important. Wait, I was misled. Um, yeah, I... Like I said, he needed bulk. He got bulk. Uh, there's nothing bulkier than Shuckle. So, like, if you can hit it with... What's, well, is there a four times effect to move on it? Disconnecting. D Hello? You can disconnect. Oh. You can disconnect on the Shuckle and just quit. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's a super effective move on it. <laughs> True. I was so confused. I thought you said the Skype call was disconnecting. I was like, hello? <laughs> but no, yeah, no. you're right. That's the best way to approach a Shuckle. Um, we'll just... I mean, it's not impossible to beat, obviously, but it is going to be hard to... Like, if it's only Shuckle left, you're fine. You get, you just keep throwing Mons at it. There's uh, no way. I don't know. It's... it's I, I just... It, it, it's going to be a pain to deal with. I'm glad I only had to play him once. So Yeah, I, I feel bad for the White Division. Yeah. Sorry, Giraffe, Rig, Giraffe Rigs and the Crawdon. Wait, this is... No, Crawdons. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anyway, next mon, another great pick. Um, addresses the fairy uh, and poison. He doesn't even have a poison weakness. I don't know why I was bringing it up. Well, he, whatever. Um, Kabolion is another stealth rocker, another steel type. I see. Kabolion was also someone who I almost took when Registeel got sniped. I almost took Kabolion third round, but I said no. I'll wait on it. Whatever happens, and I even passed on it entirely in favor of a Scavalier. 
but Kavolion Thunder Waves, it's immune to dark, it's not immune, but it, it punishes dark types um, to try to knock it off. Um, it gets Stealth Rocks, I think I said, I don't know if I said that, I know I said T-Wave, but I don't know if I said Stealth Rocks. It, uh, it gets Sacred Sword, which is a nice move, because um, it ignores stat changes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. It's just a really good mod. Like, <laughs> yeah. He addresses a lot of things that he didn't need to address, but that just solidify his his presence in the league. Uh-huh. I, I mean, I think his biggest weakness, honestly, at this point in the draft was fire. And it's not even that big because he has three mons that resist it. And uh, it might be ground? Yeah. Mold Breaker EQ would hurt, definitely. I... But he's got he's, he's got two flying types. I don't know. It's really tough to see the weakness on his uh, team. Uh, um, well, no, it is ground. I would say ground's his biggest weakness. Chinchino might do something here. Yeah, Chinchino could. Chinchino definitely could. Um, but his last mon definitely cleans up whatever fire weakness there would be. Uh, it is the Chandelure. Yeah. And this thing would be OU if it had Levitate. Like, that's how good this mon is. Like, as long as you avoid... If you run Focus Ash or avoid the ground type attack, you're pretty much good. Well, obviously, knockoff is a thing too, but like this thing's outspeeding most things. Choice Scarf for Focus Sash, a dark type's not going to appreciate uh, overheat or a fire blast. So, and uh, it's immune to fire attacks. So, any anytime Registeel's about to get blasted, or Cavolion's about to get blasted, or Galvantula's about to get blasted, or <laughs> Garbar's about to get blasted, uh, Chandler's like, Yo, bro, what's up? Give me that boost. And I, uh, man, this is a really good. He's in a really tough division with really two really good people mm -hmm. to battle against. And see, going in, I had him as the loser of that division, and I think I because I, I had no idea about him at all. And I think he dra just drafting. I've still never seen anything, but I think he drafted himself into above the Crawdons, who I still think are going to do well. But just based on their drafts, I think he's drafted himself in a really good position. Um. This is my favorite team out of the whole league. I, I straight up, we haven't even done the other the other leagues or the other teams. I think this is my favorite team to. I, I think it's become out of the ones we've done. It's my favorite team. I haven't I haven't studied each team in depth. I've looked at all of them, so I can't say for sure. But this is definitely my favorite team so far, just because it covers itself so well. It has a nice balance um, between special and uh, like not a great balance, but it has four special attacker, good special attackers. So it's got a nice balance, and I can see him going pretty far. Yeah, e I'd, even I'd... even if he was like the worst battler in the league, not a bad battler, but the worst battler in the league, this team would still get him at least like four wins. <laughs> this is I like this team a lot. Yeah. I really like this team. I don't have anything bad to say about it. Maybe the shuckle sucks. And my my only bad thing is there's no reason to draft draft Haxorus. Haxorus is not a bad pick. It's a bad pick for him because he already has Dragonite. But that's it. That's it. I, other than like he doesn't like Mamoswine might go to town a bit, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sh well, no Chandler. Uh, the only thing that doesn't appre that Mamoswine wouldn't appreciate is the uh, and if I can't kill Registeel or Kabolion before they kill me. That's a thing. Yeah. A lot of people are going to have to preserve their win conditions, which means they're going to have to sack off things. Like in when, order I, to... when I play him, no matter what I bring and no matter what he brings, um, uh, I, I need Mamoswine and Infernape to get through that steel core. Yeah. So there are things that you definitely have to bring. And if you can somehow, somehow set up on his team... That would be a problem for him. He has no way to get anyone out. Yeah. Well, then no, he's, he's got Dragon Tail. That's, it's still not a viable move because you're going to have to, regardless, take a hit. True, and true. The only way that you can get past this team is you're going to have to play really good. Your prediction game is going to have to be uncanny. Yeah, definitely. You're just going to you're gonna have to get him off balance. But you're going to have to really start setting up. Yeah. And make sure you have a firm grip on that setup if you can. But at the same time, he can do that too, and you're in trouble. So Yeah. Or if you bring Racky sets. <laughs> No one yeah. can predict it, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think we got him pretty much covered. I pretty much think we pampered him and loved on him enough. Yeah, um, once again, sorry. Sorry. We, fl sorry. we flipped him up. That, but that is definitely my favorite team so far. And now we're moving on to the creator of the RBL. Your the boy. No, is, <laughs> your boy. The no, I think he was the number one team last season. And third place, or no, fourth place finisher last year. 
because he lost to the Pyroars, who lost in the finals. So that makes him fourth place in my mind, because that's how I work. And his draft to me is up, down, like it's it's like a heart, uh, <laughs> like a heartbeat almost. Boom, uh, boom. Like it, it, there's a lot of good. Actually, no, it's not even. There's like two Mons that I don't love. That he three Mons that I don't love that he drafted. Let's go through the teams. Let's go through the Pokemon and see how it works out. I haven't really looked at his team, so... Mega Arrow. I've said my piece on it. I don't love it. Don't hate it. But he did draft the perfect counter to his weaknesses, Mega Arrow's weaknesses with his first round pick in Rotom Wash. We just had an awkward silence there. I yeah, hope you appreciate that. Yeah, I was, I was waiting for you. I was going to let you get in your word right there. Um, I Personally, since I love the Aerodactyl, the Rotom Wash perfectly fits the bill for whatever Aerodactyl could possibly yeah. be facing against, and that's really awesome because it's great to have your Mega complement something that you need, and it makes it that uh, it makes the Mega more viable in regards of using it, especially something like Aerodactyl. It needs great support. Yeah, his first five to six months have great synergy together for sure. Like, he had to have those planned out roughly um, because... Like his next mon uh, is Dragalgi, um, and it's weak to ground and dragon. I think that's it. All right, nice. Um, but he has, his first two mons are immune to ground, and Rotom resist ice. It's a powerful dragon that he gets that is great in because it gets adaptability. So it's great in dealing hits. But he has answers for its weaknesses that aren't relying too much on other things. Yeah, I, I like the Drake Algae just because it it's so powerful. Adaptability, Draco Meter, Choice Back, kills things. Yeah, definitely. It breaks walls, it breaks walls, it does. Breaks hearts. It makes tears. Breaks Fishing screams. <laughs> anyway. um, yeah, I, I mean, the first three picks, there's not a lot to say because they're basically perfect picks. Yeah, like, uh, I'll, I, personally, I don't, li- I don't I like don't... the Drake Algae as a BL pick. Yeah, it, Drake Algae is a lot of points. But with adaptability, I can see where he sees the value. And the fact that Rotom and Aerodactyl answer its weaknesses perfectly, I can see where he was like, uh, okay. The only weakness that doesn't answer is Psychic, but he has three Mons other than them that answer the Psychic weakness. And that's the Celebi. Well, four Mons. I forgot to count the Celebi. He has four Mons that answer the Psychic weakness, and I like the Celebi pick, too. Um, There wasn't a lot of great Mons, in my opinion, in OUB. Um, but Celebi, Celebi can be very good if you use it correctly. Yeah, I, I like the Celebi just because I, he used the Jirachi last season and he used it really good. I think the Celebi, he's going to use the same or a different way, but he's going to make it as just effective. As effect, yeah, I, I see Celebi more as a support mon. I don't know how you view it, like with Heal Bell, stuff like keeping, basically staying alive, being a wall type, um, and just causing, being a pain in the ass. That's how I view Celebi, but I could be totally off base with how I'm viewing it. The but only common it, weakness that I really see, though, is just Ice, though. That, that's answered by the Rotom, Rotom, but his next Mon, too, uh, the Mon after that, and then his third to last Mon. So, I think it's answered pretty well. Uh, his uh, next Mon is the Dewblade, too. Uh, do you have anything else to say about the Selby? No, no. no. I'm good on Selby. We'll move on to Dewblade, then? Yeah, and besides Knockoff... Um, this is a great pick because it answers every other weakness that he would have. They like his first, like I said, his first five bonds complement each other well. Um, basically, you want a fire attack on Dewblade, Rotom Wash. You want a ground attack, uh, Rotom Wash or uh, Aerodactyl. You want to um, uh, what is it? <laughs> you want a Psychic, the Dragalgi, Celebi, or uh, Dewblade. Um, the only problem is Dewblade relies on Eviolite and Knockoff is super effective against it. Yeah, and. That means if you somehow get something with a knockoff stuck with Dewblade, he is most likely going to switch out. And yeah. Rotom doesn't get a lot of healing things. Uh, yeah. And whether it be regards you want to let Dragology take the hit, then that could be a problem because they they don't recover and they do need their items. Yeah. Well, I mean, he has an answer, a switch and answer for knockoffs. Well, as his last pick, you got to remember that. Oh right, right, right. Well, because it resists it and it gets boosted by it. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So we'll we'll get there, but I think I think we, he has like the synergy between the five. Yeah, the knockoff is a problem just between those five. Later in the draft, he answers it, and his next pick is awesome. Um, 
Uh, I'm not surprised it went this late, but I'm also kind of surprised. It's weird. I thought it could go early. I thought it could go where it went. Um, Azumarill. And this thing is power. Um, yeah. It gives him a fairy type, which is always good to have. He has a fancy core, but it's not really a defensive fancy core. I guess you can run a Soul Vest Azumarill, Eviolite like the Blade, and but like it's a very, it's very, not bad, um, uh, not expected. So, a word that means not expected core. Of, of, and I know people when they draft, they're not looking for a fancy core. It kind of just happens because Fairy, Dragon, and Steel, or yeah, go well together. So he doesn't have to run Bellodrum. He has huge power anyway. He can run a Soul Best. He could just Aqua Jet. He could Choice Band. Uh, there's just so many things he could do with the Zoom Roll that it doesn't have to be one thing. And Zoom Roll's just straight power. Yeah, I, I agree. That's it's a pretty solid point on your part. Like I said, I, I'm just looking at his team, and this this is one of the teams when I saw them drafting Mon by Mon by Mon, I didn't like it. Uh huh. But now seeing his team once again and seeing like how well they complement each other, it's starting to grow on me, and I'm interested. I'm I'm intrigued. Color me intrigued. All right. Uh, are you anything more on the Zoom roll? It's just a beast. I'm scared. Um, yeah. Aqua Jet, Belly Drum. There's so many things you got to prepare for it, just because it's one of those mods that you always do week in, week out, have to prepare. Because if yeah. you don't, then it's going to sweep you, and you're going to cry, and you're going to be like, oh, I should have prepared <laughs> for it. That sucks. Yeah. Um, up next is the only mod I don't like, and I, it's, I don't like it. It's not one of those things where it's like, oh, it's good, bad. It's Claydol. And I don't like it because he could have got hit on top and Tentacruel. And I know, I, I'm not saying I should have drafted Tentacruel because that would have been three water types and two poison types, but I would have loved to see the hit on top go here. Yeah, well, I don't mind the the clay doll just because it's really defensive in what he My has. Only problem. It's, it's an extra immunity to um, Earthquake. Yeah, but the only problem is you know what's happening every time. Yeah, that's that, that's the only thing, too. And you know, if you're looking at his team, what's happening. You have, what, he has one Defogger and one Rapid Spinner. In terms of, like, viability on what his mons can do, it's not... His most unpredictable Pokemon, uh, Pokemon is Aerodactyl. Yeah, I, I, I would I would have I would like this rapid spinner pick if it was Hitmontop, just because Hitmontop's abilities give it more way more viability, and he didn't have a fighting type anyway. He already had the psychic type, um, so it may give him another ground immunity. But he only has two Mons weak to ground, and he already had a ground resist and two ground immunities. Yeah, so I, I would I just would I would prefer Hitmontop here. Maybe, maybe I'll. <laughs> I mean that's just my opinion, obviously, because um, he. But he does have a common dark weakness too. Yeah, so that's that's why I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah I can see. I can see why. I can see why not. Because he has one mon that resists dark. Yeah, one mon that resists dark. So, you know, I, I would have liked to see him on top there. It might, no, it was not gone. Hit on top was taken second to last round, but points. So points are a thing too. Um, but wait, he took. I'm trying to think, uh, what Mon did he take that I think Verizion would have been gone if he took Hitmontop, so I might have taken away a dark thing. But I think I still would have preferred uh, Hitmontop over Verizion. Yeah. Anyway, next pick, he adds to his special power with Porygon Z. So, normally I would like Porygon too, but he already had one EV Light user, so this is perfectly fine. Uh, it's it tri attack, hits hard, whatever, it's awesome. So, I, I like the pick. Um,. The only thing that I don't like about his mons is the predictability. Yeah. Again, he can he can run different sets, and most likely the Jewish giraffe has ran countless and countless of calculations on what his yeah. mon can do, what they can't do. So, like in terms of like viability and how versatile they are, I don't see a lot of flexibility in that. Because the Zoomerald, you know, it's gonna. It's got like four sets. It's got yeah, four sets. It's Dublai, got belly... You know what Dublai... item's most likely gonna yeah. carry? It has to carry Evolve. There's no option. It has uh, to carry Evolve. Dragology, you know what it's gonna do. It's gonna hurt you. Yeah. Uh, Rotom Wash. The Rotom. Most... I, I, it's move sets predictable, but you never know what type of Rotom you're gonna face. Defensive, um, like uh, straight out special attacking. What? So he has. I think Rotom's a little more. A bit more unpredictable, but at the yeah. same time, it is, it does run a pattern. Um, yeah. And I feel like with the team that he has, it might stay the same Rotom. Yeah. True. Um, true. Claydol's predictable, and Porygon Z. They're Predict. all very standard sets. Except for Aerodactyl. Except for Aerodactyl and Celebi. Yeah. Um, next pick still falls on that trend, but it's so much power at this late in the draft that I can't find any fault in it. 
uh, Darmanitan. Um, it's beautiful, amazing, sheer force, <laughs> U-turn, whatever. Uh, it's it, This late in the draft, it's a great pick, and even though it's pretty common set, there's Scarf and then I think maybe Band, but that'd be my, that might be illegal. That might be too much power. Um, obviously, I'm kidding. Uh, so I like the Darn pick a lot, even though it falls into that category of being somewhat predictable. Yeah, the thing with being predictable is that's there's a reason why those sets are always used. It's because they're successful. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, but like, uh, like uh, there's not a lot of common weaknesses, which is pretty big. And the, when there is a common weakness like ground, he has answers to it. Like Clay Doll, like Azumarill wouldn't mind taking the EQ if it was defensive. Uh, I don't think Verizion would mind if I don't know it's bulk though. Uh, Aerodactyl's immune. Uh, Rotom's immune. Uh, Celebi levitate. Or uh, natural cure. Natural Selby's natural cure. cure. Yeah. Um, Skunk Tank actually does not enjoy a EQ. I just realized that. So Skunk Tank, Darm, and uh, Dew Blade along with uh, Dragalgi don't like ground. So ground hurts him pretty pretty well. But um, despite the commonality... Uh, that's not even a word. Uh, that might be a word, but I used <laughs> it wrong. But bes- besides the standardness some of his mons have, they each have like three sets except for Dew Blade, which has like two um, Clay Doll, which has one, unless he gets cheeky. Uh, I still think his team can put in some serious work. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because, like I said, they're they're good, and the Jewish Rap is a really, really, really good battler. I've yes. lost to him countless times. And the next pick, though, the next pick makes me question what he's going to do with it, and I think I might know. That's, well, I mean, I don't. I besides Sucker Punch, I have no idea what this thing runs. I know it can get Defog. I think. Um, but I don't know after that. So this adds to some unpredictability. I yes. have no idea. And um, gives him a dark resist, which he needs. I feel like <laughs> now that the Jewish giraffe is watching, and I hope you are, and immediately when I saw Skunk Tank, I was like, don't do this to me. Please don't. I'm going to be so done. If you run Explosion Choice Band on Skunk Tank, <laughs> I will die. <laughs> we will have to find a new coach. <laughs> I will, well, you're going you're gonna to have to find a new coach, a new podcaster. Cause, Don't do that to me. Because <laughs> this thing can learn explosion. And explosion alone with the choice band is viable enough that it can change a match because it can take out one important piece of another I don't, team. I don't even think it needs a choice ban. You could bluff another item all game and then just be like, normal gem explosion! Boom! So that you're not locked in the move. Yeah. Just like, oh my god! <laughs> so if he's, <laughs> he's sitting there like sucker punching, defogging, intoxicating, or whatever. I don't know what it does besides sucker punching, defogging. You're like, okay, well, he, all he's got, it's 2v1, and my, uh, he's got two, I got one. It's just a stupid little, oh my god, it's exploding. <laughs> <laughs> and... And I feel like this is what this gunk tank is gonna do. This is the, this is my wild card of a mod. Uh, my bold prediction is Dew Blade picks up less than three kills. Ooh. No, picks up less than two. Two. I want it to be really bold. <laughs> Knockoff is so prevalent even in this format that it, it's gonna be tough. Like, and okay, I want to change that a little bit. It's gonna get less than two kills where their health is le- uh, over ten percent because he can shadow sneak and pick up quick kills like that. So, Dewblade's going to have less than two kills with, from mons that are higher than 10% health. Yeah. Um, I really want this skunk tank to do work. Your prediction is he Explo- picks up 100 kills with My explosion. prediction <laughs> is an explosion will knock off Mega Venusaur back into a bubble sort, back into its egg. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Alright. The last mon is Verizion. And, I mean, there's not much to say. It gets Giga Drain, which is nice. Sacred Sword. Um, resistant and punishes Dark Types. Good pick for his team. He needed another Dark Resist besides Skunk Tank. Um, so, and I think he got it. And uh, and the Zoom Roll. So, I think he got it. It works well. It, it's nice for the team. Yeah, I, li- I like the Verizion. Um, round 10 Verizion now is becoming a thing instead of Round 10 Terrakion. It's not the same. Mm, that's what I thought, too. It's not the same. <laughs> I was like, but round yeah, two. Like, ah. <laughs> anyway, um, anywho, I like Verizion. I think it's a perfect Pokemon for what he needs because he needed he an, needs an attacking, fighting, and grass Pokemon. 
Yeah, he he, he definitely needs something grass. to eat. Yeah, it's grass and fighting. He needs something to eat up the dark type attacks. And if you hit any Tracheon, um, if you eat, hit Tracheon, Cavalion, or Verizion with a dark type attack, it's not going to be good for you. Yeah, the only bad thing about it is that it's got pitiful defense, but yeah. at the same time, he's got Rodent Wash, he's got Dew Blade. Yeah, he's uh, got Zoom other roll, things to Rolls, bulky, Claydol, Skunk Tank, Shelby. The only thing that I see on his team is lack of recovery. Yeah. Um, so if you force the Jewish Giraffe to switch out all the time, then it's going to be a problem for him. But at the same time, it's going to be really hard to switch out on the Jewish Giraffe because... This is one of those teams that rocks does nothing to. Yeah. And it does, like The only thing it does is U-turn Darm. It doesn't appreciate rocks. So there would be like no reason to bring rocks if you have an answer to Darm. So in terms of like the team being built, I, I love the team. As Yeah. As much as I, I said, oh, it's all right. I love the team. It's one of the hidden gems. I feel like it's one of the hidden gems of a team that really got built around Aerodactyl. And the Jewish Draft did a fantastic job. Oh, of, definitely. Uh, I, 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 was, I was critical of Aerodactyl, of the Aerodactyl pick. Not like I didn't hate it. I liked it. But I just felt like he could have got a better mom where he's at. But he definitely built around it and has made a team that brings out its strengths and can make it succeed. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's a really, really great... Now, it's not Markarth level good. <laughs> Markarth but Magic Cups. Magic Cups of Markarth. That's one of the best built rosters I've seen. Yeah, and it definitely, like, looking at the white division, it is so much power. There's so much potential. Even the Ethereum Knight, as much as we bashed on it... Yeah, it definitely has potential there. Um, uh, it's just there were, there were some issues that he needs to address. I, I, like I said, I think it's just one mon that would fix all of it. Like it would, it would take the team from eh, no to okay, yeah. And it's just he needs to get rid of the sock. <laughs> so, hashtag socks gotta go. Um, but I think I think that's it for the episode. Yeah, I feel like we've gone through all Destroyed the teams. It. <laughs> <laughs> so next week we're, or next Video. episode we're gonna be doing the Kanto Blue Division um, with the Marshalling Thundering Bufalon, the reigning champion Bavarian Beedrills and the 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 Valley Tetes Butterville Super Butterfree Glades the Butterlades the but, yeah Valley yeah. Tetes team the Gallifreys the that's Gallif- doc- that's almost a Doctor Who reference Gallifreys Gallifreys yes I made I got it in I did it <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic slow clap <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, yeah. Anywho, uh, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much. Um, check out Samaro's channel. You forgot to say, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's in the description down below. Yeah, I'm not saying that that name. It's Hope you enjoyed there. it. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions, disregards, if you guys think we're total idiots, that's okay. You guys are entitled to your own opinion. No, they're not. We do respect <laughs> this it. is not a free country. <laughs> we may not disagree with it though. Anywho, this is Cap signing off. Bye. You're saying bye too. Oh, bye. Bye. Time out.